back in the day when I first opened my exercise studio, I thought that nutritional supplementation was completely unnecessary, just like organic food as well. You know, a big marketing scheme to make people think that their lives would be so much better by taking all sorts of vitamins. So a few years later, um, when I was researching to expand my program offerings, I came across articles and studies that were suggesting the complete opposite of my beliefs about nutritional supplementation and organic food. So I reached out to some colleagues in my mastermind and I did more research on the subject and basically did a complete 180. So now I understand the importance of both and I include recommendations in all of my programs along with education, which I'm gonna give you right now. So you might be saying, well, Dorian, what the heck changed your mind? You, you know, you went from one side completely to the other. Well, there are actually a multitude of reasons and I'm gonna go over some of them today. Um, but two major categories that I see are food and lifestyle. So let's talk about food first. What happens to our food before we actually sit down and eat it matters. So we put something in front of us, but what happened to it prior to it getting there in front of us matters and it matters significantly. So let's start off with antibiotics. There are several reasons supporting the argument for the use of antibiotics in livestock when reasonably used to prevent animal suffering and to keep the animals healthy. And if the animals are healthy, this makes healthy food. Um, to help make the food safer by reducing bacteria and minimizing impact on the environment. So what's the big deal, right? The big deal is antibiotic resistance. Um, so I've added uh, my, re all of my sources are here at the, at, at the bottom of um, the printed out, uh, not the printed, um, my summary here in this module. So you can check out any of these links for more information. All right, so let's go to hormones in livestock. Hormones, primarily estrogens, are used to accelerate growth rates so the animal matures earlier. This creates less time for the animal to be on feed and fewer resources per pound of meat. So what does this do? This keeps the costs and the end user prices lower. It also provides more time to produce more uh, meat from the livestock stock. So the argument for hormone use is that the amounts used in livestock is relatively low as compared to other food. And you can see that here in this um, chart that I have. Another thing, fertilizers and pesticides. So industrial agriculture relies on two types of chemicals, fertilizers and pesticides. So fertilizers boost the, um, the soil fertility making crops more productive, right? Cha-ching! Um, pesticides protect the crops by controlling weeds and insects and animal infestation, like, you know, I don't know, moles or mice or whatever kind of things might be out in the fields, and um, funguses and mold diseases. And one of the arguments for the use of pesticides and fertilizers is not only plant protection and production, but to keep humans from what they call vector-borne diseases. These are blood-feeding insects, like mosquito, mosqui mosquitoes. <laughs> mosquitoes uh, so disease such like as as malaria and again it keeps the prices lower so not only do these chemicals sit on top of the plant but they come into the plant through the root system another really interesting thing is called uh, PGR or plant growth regulators so these are compounds that modify or alter the function and shape and size of plants like did you ever notice sometimes when you go to the grocery store because uh, i'm in the northeast in new jersey right go in the grocery store like a week ago and there's these tomatoes there that are kind of half orange-ish but they're all exactly the same shape and size nice big you know round tomatoes um and this i you know is, is attributed to this pgr so PGRs can be plant-produced hormones or synthetically produced um, compounds that act on the plant at a cellular level. So here's an example. Um, it, can, it can stimulate actually cell enlargement. So the use of growth regulators to, like say, to prevent apples and pears 
from dropping to the ground before they're ready to pick. You get a higher yield, right? And it has to do with the stem of the, of the fruit that it starts to give way. So with these growth promoting um, or these plant growth regulators, they can alleviate that. I mean, greenhouses, like tomato greenhouses, young tomatoes can be artificially stimulated and often made to stick on the vines and grow more vigorously. Again, a higher yield. Um, they can stimulate the root systems, getting a higher yield. Um, it can kill weeds, um, stimulate them to ripen faster, stimulate to grow faster. And that's a problem that I'm going to talk about in a couple of minutes. So why are these used? You bet. Cha-ching! And also to provide, we have a huge, um, you know, population to provide the food that we need um, to, cause can you imagine if there weren't any of these things, what our grocery stores would look like? So it's kind of a catch 22, right? So another thing to keep in mind about plant growth is that the produce is stimulated to grow faster. That's what I was just saying. So it doesn't have the same amount of time to absorb the nutrients from the soil or the sun. And they're harvested before they're totally ripe. Why? So they have more time to plant another crop. And then they're put into big shipping containers. And that's why you see often in the grocery store, like I was saying, these half ripe produce. Um, they're actually starting their ripening process under the grocery store lighting versus the sun. So this is produce that is not in season and lacks the nutrient density of produce that gro is grown naturally in season. So this is where supplementation, you know, multivitamins and antioxidants are really critical. Um, another one, preservatives. So the argument for preservatives and preservation techniques is that they prevent food from spoiling and oxidating, oxidizing quickly. Um, you know, so this gives the farmers and the grocery manufacturers time to distribute the foods across the country or the world. You know, probably more than half of our produce um, in the wintertime here in the Northeast comes from other countries. You know, so how long does it take to get here? Can you imagine? So, you know, saying that, um, you know, they're doing this to keep the food of a high, high um, quality and safe, you know, it's like, okay, I kind of beg to differ with that, but again, it's a trade-off. You know, this, these, these things extend the shelf life and keep the food safe. It's not only in produce, you guys, it's in all of that box stuff, canned stuff that's in the middle of the grocery store, right? It extends the shelf life. That's why we have expiration dates on it right? Some expiration dates are out like a year. That's because of all the preservatives. So there's more things, but I think you're getting the general gist. Um, like I said, I do believe that there's an upside and a downside to everything, not just here, but just in life. And I think it all comes down to balance and doing your own research. And that's where the next factor comes in, lifestyle. So we just covered food and now we're going to talk about lifestyle. So what does that have to do with nutritional supplementation and eating more organic food? A lot. Fast-paced lifestyles. Look, we're all really busy. And that's one of the reasons fast food chains do so well, prepared foods. We're so busy doing stuff for everyone else that we don't leave the time to take care of ourselves, to plan, to prepare healthy meals made from whole foods. So we get to the point that we're starving. So we seek out the closest food window that we can, or perhaps we're so busy that we rely on prepared foods that we buy at the grocery store and keep in our homes. You know what I'm talking about. The frozen vegetable lasagna that's healthy and nutrient dense, right? I don't think so. Um, but you know how much added fat, sugar, and preservatives are in that yummy meal. Stress is another thing. Chronic stress, in my opinion, is a health epidemic. My dear friend, Dr. Jennifer Montes, calls stress the new smoking. Um, you know, stress can make us crave highly palatable foods. And on top of that, the stress hormone cortisol causes us to store fat. So if you're trying to lose weight, stress makes it really difficult. I actually have a favorite supplement I recommend to my clients who are trying to manage their weight, but have high levels of stress. It contains ashwagandha, um, and that helps to support adrenal and thyroid function as well as cortisol levels. Sleep, another one. So any of us who do not get enough regular good quality sleep, um, you know, and if you're going through hormonal change, it's really bad. Our bodies do a major reset hormonally at night. 
And if you aren't sleeping well, it can have a huge impact on your health, including your weight. You know, a little shot of magnesium or melatonin at night can do the trick to help you get a good night's sleep. And then conversely, you know, during the day, because we're so busy, you know, if we get like run down, you know, we feel like lack of energy, hey, skip the coffee and shoot down a little shot of, um, of vitamin B and that'll boost up your energy levels. Another thing to think about is inflammation. Inflammation is huge, giant, giant, giant topic. You could talk about it for a weekend, but I'm just going to talk about some really small uh, basic points here. So inflammation is good for us. Instead of, when it's instead of when it's bad, normal inflammation is when your body signals your immune system to send out inflammatory cells to attack bacteria or heal damaged tissue in your body. Chronic inflammation is when your body sends out inflammatory cells when you're not sick or injured. So there's many con um, con contributions <laughs> to chronic inflammation. Um, exposure to toxins that we've talked about before. They're all around us. They're in the air. They're in our food. Um, chronic stress, over or under exercising, stress we just talked about, and being overweight. When you have chronic inflammation, your body is on, on high alert all the time. And this can cause damage to your heart, your brain, and other organs in your body. Um, you know, inflammation um, in the brain can lead to Alzheimer's. Um, and it can lead to um, um, blood vessel disease and stroke or heart attack. So inflammation is not a great thing. Chronic inflammation is not a great thing. Again, a massive topic. Um, again, check out my uh, sources here. I have some really great articles and studies that I've used um, that you, if you wanna read more, go ahead and do that. Um, let's just talk about one more thing and obesity. Obesity and inflammation go hand in hand. It's really complicated, but know this, excess fat tissue stimulates the re release of inflammation cells, which by now, you know is not a good thing. Again, I have a really great article that has tons of information on this um, that you can read about. It's located down at the bottom of the description in this lesson. So what can we do about all of this? A couple of the things that we're proposing to you in this program, eat as much organic produce, meat and groceries as possible. It can be really tough because it's much more expensive. So kind of pick and choose what you're, what you're going to do if you need to. Um, so look, for, there's a lot more organic produce and foods in our grocery stores than even just a few years ago. And it's not as expensive as it used to be a few years ago. Um, so you can choose what you can. And if you can't, make sure you're just really washing those, that produce down really, really well. Um, second thing you do is prepare your own meals with whole ingredients. So you know everything that's going into that meal and what you're putting in your mouth, okay? Um, and then supplement. Supplement with high quality, highly bioavailable antioxidants. Supplement with high quality, highly bioavailable essential vitamins and minerals. Supplement with high quality, highly bioavailable herbs and other plant-based supplements to support your individual needs, such as sleep, stress, hormonal balance, energy, focus. So for our program, we have three supplements and three protocols we'd like you to consider. You'll find this information in the supplement manual, which is a download here in this lesson. And once again, if you should have any questions about this, please reach out in our Better Together group. There's a lot of women on there who um, are, are from some of our other programs and they can give you a lot of advice or email us at info at thelimitlesslifestyleacademy.com. I know this lesson was a little bit long, but I hope that it, it was thought provoking for you and that it serves you. Have a great day and I will see you in the next lesson.